Hey, it's Frick speaking and today I will show you how to set up your mouse and keyboard for sim battles in War Thunder. I will show you how to do it from scratch so that you can have a nice baseline setup of controls and you can just, you know, go and minimize the amount of weird flat spins that you will get into. So. Uh, to start with, let's go into controls and then save your current controls in a file so that if you will fuck up anything, then you you have an easy way to just revert all the changes and, you know, without making your uh, settings look like a spaghetti code that nobody can uh, get into and fiddle with. So, next thing is to go into options and you go into common battle settings and then turn down the sense of flight to zero because it will make uh, the head of your virtual pilot just wobble and basically give you false information about the tilt of your aircraft and then you can turn down camera shake also all the way to zero uh, because the, this doesn't help in any way you can leave a little bit of it uh, if you want to, you know, sprinkle some immersion into your gameplay. Then we go into controls and then we switch to full real controls because it enables some options that otherwise wouldn't be accessible. We go into control mode, mouse joystick, yes, and then we turn the roll sensitivity, pitch sensitivity and yaw sensitivity, a lot of sensitivities right here, up to 100 because we want our aircraft to be as responsive as possible. Then we go into mouse joystick on the left and we, we switch this to standard. It should be standard by default, but, but you know, if by any chance uh, it's simplified, then just turn it back to standard. And then sensitivity is basically the speed that your virtual joystick uh, reacts to your mouse and 50 is about right. I mean, you can fiddle uh, with it if you have a very quick mouse or a very low DPI mouse, but I find 50% uh, to be just right for me, so I usually leave it at that. Then, dead zone. Uh, yeah, mouse is a very precise instrument, so the dead zone is the, 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 the circle that we see in the middle of our screen and we want to turn it down all the way to zero. Uh, then screen size, it's the size of the thing that we can zoom our cursor around uh, on the screen and it's up to personal preference. For me, it's about 45%, but you can turn it up. I mean, it's, it's all personal preference, uh, but if you want to change uh, the size of this thing, then there's the option for it. Uh, and then the aileron and the rudder, we want all the way to 100 because, as I said before, we want our aircraft to be as responsive as possible. And then we have an option to make this area on which we control our aircraft square. And it is recommended to make it square, just because it is more just logical to present the two axes on which we control our plane on the square uh, area than it is to do it on a round one then we want to unbind trim aircraft because t as you can see it's it's bound by default it's the same button that we use for pinging ourselves and on simulator battles pinging yourself is very important and communication with your team is very important uh, so we want to unbind it because uh, as i said before uh, mouse you don't really have to trim your aircraft when you are steering it with mouse because you can just pull your mouse to to one side a bit to counter the roll and just just leave it there so there we have it that's the basic controls done uh one thing if you want to invert the y-axis so if you pull your mouse towards you and you want the the plane to go down uh, then you want to invert camera Y axis here and you want to go into camera control and invert it here as well. Uh, but if you want it to 
basically work like normal. So when you pull the joystick towards yourself, the plane goes up. Uh, then just make it. Eh, eh, eh. Then just don't, don't, don't do it. So now we have the plane controls done. Now let's move on to our neck. Yeah, it sounds strange, but I will explain. So to see what's around you, you need to basically be able to see around the canopy of your aircraft. And in sim battles, it is recommended to do it by moving your head. So then you go to controls again, and then you go to camera control and you have those three options. We will focus on the two, uh, two last ones. This is optional. In some planes it may be beneficial to move your head forward and backwards, uh, but in most cases you will be just fine with those two options set up. Uh, you can just delete it mm, to have a peace of mind. So you go into head movement upward and downward. You delete all the crap that is in here by default and make way for my glorious options that I will show you right now. So you go into maximum value and we, we press W and then press add. Don't worry, I will explain. Minimum value, S, add, reset, R, add and enable axis and you bind it to your middle mouse button. So your wheel on your mouse. When you press it, uh, it's, it's a middle mouse button. Uh, and you add or replace this. Uh, this actually doesn't matter in this in this single case. The rest you need to press add. Then uh, that's important. You need to keep. You, you need to uh, turn that to yes. So we want to keep value for disabled axis, and you want to turn on relative control multiplier. It's recommended to have it uh, uh, between one and a half and two. Uh, it's personal preference. I usually do it. I usually have it set up to about 1.75 because it's the speed that our head moves about. Mm, it isn't recommended to make it too low because you you will be sluggish in your head movements and you don't want that. Uh, so about 1.5 to to two is is the recommended value. I usually set it up about 1.75 to 1.8, uh, and then you can delete the dead zone although I'm not sure if that does anything uh, but to have a peace of mind you can just turn it uh, turn it down all the way to zero so then you go to left right and basically repeat uh, the whole process in but uh, instead of W and S you go D uh, and you go add minimum value a add reset R as well uh, Add and enable access middle mouse button as well. And keep value for disabled access, relative control and in multiplier you usually want to have the same multiplier for both the axes, the left, right and the uh, up and down. You want to have the same value because it's just logical uh, and you can delete the dead zone as well. And now if you close all the options and you, you will look around the WSAD right now are for moving your aircraft. You can see the, uh, the ailerons moving, uh, the elevator moving, but if you press your middle mouse button and use WSAD, you can see that your head will start to move. You see? And when I release the middle mouse button and use WSAD, you can see it takes control of my aircraft. So basically I can just fly around and just quickly make adjustments to my head position, you know, exercise my neck or something. And if I, I don't know, if I get a cramp and I'm, uh, and I can't move my, you know, move my neck any, any higher, you, you, you just press R and it just self centers. Uh, so basically that's all the basic controls done. And now you have very good control of your aircraft. You don't have any stupid dead zone in the middle and you have very flexible neck. What else do you want? Yes, I know what you want. More tutorials, but that 
will come later. So see ya and we'll meet in the skies.